Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartsung Family Farms, and today it's September 25th, and we're a half a day into doing stuff. Let's get going. For those of you guys who don't know, this was the truck that I absolutely failed at shifting the other day, so let's see if I can do any better. Or the other video last summer, so that video will be up here. Be sure to go check that out, but let's get moving. Filling up at the gas station right now. See Kuno's got some nice 8250 sitting over there. 8240, 8250, 82, and the 6150. So not too bad. They look pretty sharp. Wish I had time to stop over there. So we're gonna fill up and then head to Bellevue. For those of you who are making fun of me at work about saying I can't shift, I'm gonna prove you guys wrong. Just wait, watch and wait. So I'm gonna show you guys how I shift a 13 speed. I ain't going though first. Not a good start, but hey. Better than I just whipped it last time. So I think I was in my Ford, our Ford 8000 truck. Here's the tricky gear. Boom. No grinding there. So I'm in our Ford 8000 truck. I'm gonna deliver some feet of my dad's up to Bellevue. I got our, it's our bean mill truck, so it's got our auger system that I went through before. So, get up to belly, but first, I'll let you guys watch my awesome shifting once again. If I can downshift and find the right gear. Oh, look at that. Just peachy. Oh! Okay, I'm talking to you, Mecca. Saying I can't shift. So that's how I drive it. That's how I drive a 13 speed, guys. Especially this one. I drive it like a, a nine speed until I'm in. Actually, I drive it like a nine speed, but then I uh, use the splitter on the last gear. So I got one, one, two, three, four, five, split, six, seven, eight, nine, upper, ten. That crews at like 50 mile an hour in this truck. Just cruise along. I right, hope you guys enjoyed that. See you at Bellevue. Made it up here to Bellevue. Now time to get that auger in there. Alrighty guys, so I'm up here running the bean mill truck. Those are my new subscribers. You've never seen this before, but basically it's got a carpet in the middle, as I said before, and it's got three hydraulic blocks over here that I can control. Well, actually five, but three that I'm using right now. These two control up and down and left and right on the actual auger itself. This controls your apron or your belt underneath and your cross auger right here. The cross auger underneath here that brings it to this up, this vertical auger, which is controlled by this one. And then your main auger is controlled by this valve block right here. And it's all run hydraulically off the truck. It's actually a really nice system. My grandpa bought this thing brand new, I believe in 19, 80s i want to say but i'm not entirely sure on that one we've been using it for a while so we really like it we're just filling up we can hold about two tons of material in here in my dad's truck or this wooden box we'll have another one ton of material over there 
All right, now we're dumping it in this silver tub. What's this going to be used for, Dad? Feed the cows and the calves. It's a handy little tub we got from our neighbor. What happened to your door? Yeah. Hey. Uh, let's hop up and check and see how much is left in this truck. That's up there a little ways. Not a lot left. We'll see if we can fit it. I think it'll fit. You just gotta keep shoveling. Now I'm bringing this thing in. See if you'll stay. There we go. Go. Let's go check out some crops. All right, you guys, we're gonna go take a look at some crops right now. See if there's a four-wheel over here I can get out. So we're gonna go take a look, just kind of see where we're at, get a gut check. Maybe take this one. A lot of junk laying around here. Thanks, Shane. Gosh. So, see if I can steal this thing. And let's go check some crops. All right, you guys, so I'm walking in my cornfield right now. It's right up here at the Bellevue Farm. We'll grab an ear, try to get one that's representative, like normal. This one looks good. Take it back. This one's 36 long. It's definitely fully dented, you can kind of see. Definitely R4. Not quite black layered yet, but it's getting really close. Now, Still a little ways away, I should say. Maybe another week or so. This cornfield's actually not doing too bad, though. So, not too bad. Not phenomenal, but there was no kick, there's no tip back on the cob, so we'll take it. We definitely had worse, that's for sure. All right, guys, so now I'm checking these this bean crop right here. It's not looking too bad. It's a little shorter than I would have liked, but beggars can't be choosers. Don't mind that little green patch right there. Nathan may or may not have forgotten to plant that, so we had to come back and replant it like two weeks later. Anyway, most of these beans have already dropped most of the leaves. It's a little shorter. Pod cans are in the 50s and 60s, so not great, but not horrible by any means. It's average, I'd say. So for the year that we had, I will take average. Let's go check this corn. Now I'm over here in the cornfield across the road. This is planted five or six days after that field that I was just in. Oh, hey, look, a little sucker head. It's kind of weird when they grow ears on top of their corn, on top of the plant. Anywho, let's walk in a little ways, grab an ear. This corn does not look near as good, nor near as far along, but it's not near as tall, but this one looks good. It's about average. It's definitely small. Again, I'm just prefacing, as I've done it with every other time I've checked fields, this is just representation. One ear out of millions of ears that are in this field is not going to be a good accurate yield count. It's just an estimation, but be kind of interested when I look back at this in the fall and uh, look back and see how close I was. Alrighty guys, so this corn is a very short ear, decent amount of tip back, which basically means there's no, not enough water. I don't think this is a very accurate representation. I think, I'm hoping we have bigger ears than this, but it was 30, 29 or 30 long. Sorry for the camera angle, but Break it open, about the same distance away from black layer as the other field. A little bit more starch, so the corn hasn't filled out quite enough. It almost is fully dented though, so not too bad. I'm guessing 14 around, 16 around. Okay, I take that back. So, alrighty guys, so I need to go hop in the truck and head back, head back to the farm. See what's going on, I got a surprise for you guys. I, I forgot how awesome this horn sounds. Traffic jam. Just got back to the farm, putting this thing away, making sure it's in there good, which it is. Good enough for me. Shut this thing off and see what else is going on.
My grandma, 86 years old, bad knees, is cutting grass right now. So uh, I'm gonna go take her spot because I don't like that. My grandma, she can never sit still. I love her, she's a hard worker, but man, she just needs to know like, I can do that. I just, I gotta help out Pat when I can. So I'm gonna go cut grass with the only piece of John Deere tractor that we own. LA 110 automatic John Deere lawnmower. Well, that took a lot longer than I expected. That cut grass for two hours. Man, oh man. But I cut all, everything for my grandma. She literally just did a small patch over in the corner before she saw me cutting. And then I went over to Jerry's and I cut about an hour of grass over there. Yeah, I'm about done. My ears are still ringing and the bolt fell off this, uh, push them all over my grandma, so I gotta fix that. And then, see what else we can do. Well, I got a treat for you. First time we've ever done this. Let's head down and go check out what we're doing. So as you guys just saw in the drone footage, we're actually windrowing our soybeans. So this was our prevent plant soybeans. They actually looked really good, really healthy. We can't do anything with them. We can't harvest it for grain because we took the prevent plant payment, PVP. But what we can do is we can actually harvest it for, so for forage, for cattle feed. We're able to do that starting September 1st. So that's actually worked out pretty well for us. I mean, this is gonna be some great I'm hoping it's great forage. It's the first time, we've, first time we've ever done this, but there's a lot here. And that's just one plant right here, guys. And there is 50 acres worth. So it's gonna be a long day of chopping tomorrow. And you guys might probably even get a video of it. So here's what it is, guys. We're, our neighbor is, we hired him to custom all of our, to windrow all these soybeans with his, uh, I believe it's an HW, 200 New Holland. I'm not sure. It's a New Holland windrower. 18 foot wide head. We're just going to come through with a pickup head and chop it off. So, whew. It's going to be fun, guys. Another reason why we're doing this right now is because we actually need a place to haul manure. We have a lot of manure to haul. We're supposed to get one to two inches this weekend, which is not great by any means. And we need to get this manure out here before it basically runs off with all the water we're going to get. So. 2588's all done, 7088's almost done. I think Pat's gonna go hook up to the corn head right now and Bun's gonna start working on that. So Pat's gonna hook up to the 2308 corn head right now. Hook it up so Bun can start working on it. It was sitting on that trailer ever since last, no oh geez, when did we get this? When did we stop using this? Last December. So it definitely needs some TLC, it needs some work. So Pat's just line up the face plate on the actual header plate or the feeder house I should say I can't walk over there because I gotta stay in here because there's actually cattle in this lot so I can't move anywhere so you guys will get a decent view from here he's just angle lining it all up 
and soon he'll he'll lift he'll raise that header up off the header trailer. There we go. Perfect. Lucky there. That's an eight-roll, thirty-inch corn head. Had it for a long time. I believe we actually bought it new. So need some work, that's for sure. So that's what Bun's here for. We're very thankful we have Bun. what he was wanting to do well guys that's gonna be it for me for today I gotta head home cut grass and get ready to go because I'm heading to North Dakota tomorrow so hope you guys enjoyed that video if you guys did be sure to like comment and subscribe follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hartung Family Farms and of course guys as always